Hey, it's Joe at Red's Fly Shop here. Uh, it's springtime and I'm doing a little boat reset because I got a brand new 2023 Clackacraft Headhunter 2 skiff. Pretty much identical to the last Headhunters I've had, except we got some super Gucci rod holders, uh, some other little modifications, but it's a great boat. Ordered the same boat every single year. But what I wanted to do this year was just uh, kind of do an oar pimp out, uh, if you will. These are Smoker Bandits. They're unbelievably light. We sell them in store here at Reds, and they're just the, they're the lightest carbon shaft I've ever used. And it makes it a lot easier on my forearms, especially for technical rowing, like switching to crab strokes, uh, and just the thousands of repetitions of lifting the oars uh, out of the water. Not to mention actually rowing. But this is a Smoker Bandit, and one of the problems that I had uh, with it is it's a very small diameter shaft, and I like to run oar rights uh, on my boat. So I always love it when I see hateful and hurtful comments about, oh my God, I can't believe you have oar rights. As soon as somebody says that, you know they haven't done much rowing or guiding uh, or anything like that. And I'll explain why a little bit later in the video. But uh, this is an oar right that's been cut off. It's a stubby oar right. And uh, what the oar right does is it indexes your oars and holds your boat in just lock steady position when you're on, say, uh, a pot of feeding fish uh, would be an example. So that's why that's on there. Uh, the problem with the bandits in the oar right is this, is they're a small shaft, and I went to throw oar rights on mid-season last year, and the shaft is so small that the oar right doesn't fit on there, and I just didn't have time to engineer a way to, to put that on there. So I want the oar right on there, and what I ended up doing was this, uh, and I'll tell you, I replaced the grips on these two and I got a little advice on that. But what I did is I ended up cutting up one of my mountain bike inner tubes and wrapped, I cut it into about a one inch strip and then I wrapped it around the shaft. This one's not cut yet, but I wrapped it around the shaft uh, essentially three times and I used a much thinner piece. Um, this one hasn't been cut yet. And I'll do my, my next oar here in a minute, but I'm not going to do a play-by-play -play because it takes too long. And then that oar right has something soft and very sticky and tacky to bite into so that that oar right can't spin and it can't slip um, right there. So that's what I use to shim it. Um, a couple of other things, and then I'll talk through like why oar rights are a strategic advantage for the angler. Uh, one, Sawyer oars both the square tops and even the, the smokers have a pretty parabolic grip to them. And uh, let's go ahead and get a little different angle here, like like so. They have a pretty parabolic grip. And what I did is I took my, my pad sander and I just took a little bit of the rise out of that. Not a lot, not enough to infect the instructional integrity, but um, the grip down in this end is really nice and thin and you can really choke in on that and grip. But when you're rowing for eight hours at a time on a long day, and if you haven't been to the Yakima River during the summertime, I mean, this thing jams. It is heavy water all day. If you want to hold that boat in position, your grip strength is going to give out usually before your back or anything else over that many hours. So I thin that down a little bit and then I put the replacement grip on. Um, the way I did is I sanded it down starting with 60 grit and then 120 grit. I used power sander. You don't need one of those, but the thinner grip makes a big difference. A lot of our guides that run these, they end up cutting these grips off just to thin it down. But I just took advantage of just the reset, sanded it down, thinned it out a little bit, put the grip on, followed the instructions of the Sawyer website, and I used rubbing alcohol to lubricate it to put the preheated uh, grip back on. So that's uh, what I did uh, with the grips there. Now on to the oar right. So the oar right is not uh, because I can't figure out how to put my blade in the water and keep it square, okay? So I know there's always a comment, oh my God, what an idiot, he has oar rights. The oar right is for this, okay? So it's gonna go in my swivel lock right here. So let's go ahead and zoom in. So I'm gonna row and you can see the wear mark here. Okay, get right in here close. You can see the wear mark here. This is where my oar meets the lock. 90 plus percent of the time. I actually suck my oars in and I'm rowing in here and I'm feathering and pitching my oar blade based on what the boat's doing to hold that position perfect for a guided angler. When I anchor my boat, here's what happens if you don't use the oar right when you anchor. This starts to, to wobble a little bit. That blade that's up front there starts to wobble. 
pretty soon it's up on the surface and it's kicking around and splashing around. And then what winds up happening is your entire boat begins to oscillate on anchor. So then all of a sudden the boat's wiggling around. You start to drag sideways a little bit. You're kind of anchored. I'm trying to tie a fly or my clients are trying to cast at a pot of feeding fish on dry flies and my boat's wandering around. When I lock this oar right in, and there's usually a sweet spot somewhere there. When I lock this oar right in, now my oar stays dead steady in the water with that blade right there like that. And then my boat just holds just lock on lock. And so we can actually throw that number 16 elk hair caddis or blue wing at those feeding fish without that boat oscillating on a long anchor rope. Now that may not be an issue if you don't deal with the types of currents that we have here, but we got this, this river jams, like I said, it's at four times this volume during the summer months here. It is swift, um, but the oar lock locks in. The other thing about the oar right too is when I reach down and let's just say I'm, I'm a, on a guide trip here and, uh, and let's just go through kind of the scenario up here on dry land. Let's just say I'm in heavy current and I'm pulling the anchor. A lot of times when you pull the anchor and your oars are flopping around, if you've ever rode a drift boat and had that drift boat start to go sideways as you're picking up the anchor, that's a lot of times because you're oscillating so much as you're doing it. But with the oar locked in like this, it stays put. The other thing is when I go to grab these oars, let's say they're relaxed for a moment, they're already indexed. I already know I've got a full stroke right here without any rotation. So while I may not row, that would be super awkward because I've got my oar right positioned way up like this right here. I suck my oar in like this right here to row where you can see that wear mark. But when I grab it, my oar is indexed. So I already know I've got uh, a good blade stroke and I'm not gonna miss a stroke like that because as soon as I grab my oar without looking at it, I don't need any dots or bumps or braille up here on my grip because my oar right indexes it for me. I can suck that oar in and I'm ready to go. I can crab stroke like this, for instance, because I'm sucking my blade all the way back. But when I anchor or stop and put that oar in a rest position, I want to know that that blade is going to sit right there. And when I suck it up, especially if I'm in a pinch, like a tight spot or something like that, I've got that oar indexed already. So that's why the oar rights, if you want the stubby version, you can just buy a standard set and cut them off. I like the stubby version a little bit better, but the full version is fine to the stubby version is kind of nice because I can pull it out and I can still have a little bit more latitude to take some strokes uh, right in there uh, if I wanted it being a little bit shorter than the original version, which is gonna come out to about right there. But that's the shim, that's the grip. On the grip, I took one piece of Gorilla Tape and just kind of cinched that seam down right there. I may end up taking some bat tape or golf uh, club grip tape and just running one seam there so I don't have that edge from the foam uh, grip. But yeah, that's the rundown on my ore setup on my Clackercraft Headhunter 2 2023 skiff.